Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's 3D World. As promised, I am going to show you how to create a shotgun shell clock. What I did is I modeled this after a 20 gauge shotgun shell. This is your typical 20 gauge shotgun shell size. As you can see, this one is much larger. Uh, I had a good time designing this, making this. As you can see, the ends look fairly authentic. It had some detail I put in there. And we have a little clock we insert we put in here. This, can, this clock insert just has a rubber grommet around it that fits like that. I will have a link below in the description uh, to Amazon to be able to buy these clocks. They're a little battery operated clock. And you can, you can actually set this up one or two ways. You can set it up so it's upright that way. I don't have the 12 o'clock straight up, but you get, the, you get the idea. You can have it that way, or you can do exactly what I did down here. I built a little stand that it sets in so you can have it on your desk either way. So let's take a little closer look at that. What we're going to do today Is, as you can see here, I have samples of some shotgun shells. These are 12 gauge shotgun shells, and you can see the difference in size between 12 and 20 gauge. Now what you can see here is a little bug that's crawling around on the darn thing. Dang, those little things are everywhere. Um, I printed a miniature model first, just to make sure all my geometry was gonna look good and do what I wanted it to do. And for the one we're gonna do today, a little bit bigger version of it, I printed this at a little bit bigger scale, just to test it out. Out of the 12 gauge shotgun shell, see, same clock opening, same kind of thing going on there. Anyway, and this is some kind of a silky copper. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing, and then we're going to show you how to draw it. The two colors I'm going to be using to print this is this, was it, TTYT 3D Shine Copper PLA Filament. It's, uh, it's a PLA Max Red 3D print. It's right there, I saw it. Mailbox Red. Anyway, there'll be a link in the description for this red. Currently, I have the print underway. As you can see here, here's the base of it. This will be 275 millimeters tall when it's all done. This is a CR10 printer. It's capable, uh, capable of doing 300 millimeters high, so this will fit. Now, some of you that have smaller printers, like an Ender 3, you may be able to print this, but you will probably have to do it in two sections. You'll have to do it in a bottom section and a top section. I will save the files that I'm creating today off and put them on Thingiverse, and I'll have both versions. I'll have the one complete height one, full height, one print, and then I'm going to have the other one that is uh, be two pieces. You can print off both pieces at two different colors and then glue them together. Uh, what I'm waiting for here is this is going to come up. When I hit 450 layers is when I'll pause it. I'll raise this up about 10 millimeters through Octoprint. I've got this all set up through Octoprint so I can control it from my computer. And then I'll swap out the copper color here with red. And then I'll let it continue on with red. And that's how I'll get the shotgun shell look out of it. And the bottom's got some more detail just like I had before. And the top has a little different, different detail I put on it. Anyway, we'll show you. We'll get busy drawing that. And then we'll show you the finished product when it's all done. So you guys can enjoy and make something like this. This would be a great little gift for somebody if you wanted to. Uh, you you got a, a guy in your life that likes hunting, fishing, and stuff like that. What better thing to give him than a shotgun shell clock? It's going to cost you about $20. Not even $20 in filament. It's about 500 uh, kilograms, which would be about $11 worth of, of material total. And the clock that I'm showing, that I had in the picture of the other one is a ten dollar clock off amazon so it's actually pretty cool looking pretty unique you can't just go buy one of these at the store uh so you could be the the champion gift giver when it comes to stuff like that let's get on the computer and show you how we're going to draw this thing up okay folks here we are back in the drawing room again and i'm going to show you how to draw here's our shotgun shell finished drawn you can see the detail here on the lettering on the bottom, the, some primer detail here, top of the shotgun shell right here. You can see the how I have it, the crimp drawn in for authenticity. And then we got our hole for a clock. And right now, as you can see, this clock is drawn with a 60 millimeter hole in it. That's the size uh, clock that I'm using. 
on this particular one. Uh, and that'll be in the link to link in the description below, like I said before. The cool part is on this one, when you see this detail around here in this area, uh, this is going to be like a, like a freelance, which you, you can do whatever you want here. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you step by step. When we're all said and done here, you should be able to draw this on your own following this. If you want to watch my video and pause it, do the step, pause it, do the step, pause it. You can do that. Feel free to do that. Or you can go straight to Thingiverse and download it. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be drawn in one piece here. And then I'm going to draw it in. Then I'm going to do the same drawing in two pieces where I'll split it right here. So you can print this bottom half in the copper color or your brass color or whatever color uh, filament you want to print that in. And then the top part, like I did on the 20-gauge shotgun shell, this was in silver. On the upper part, you can do it in red, yellow, purple. You know, you can pretend this is purple on a 16-gauge, you know, so anything like that. All right. Well, with that being said, let's get started and see if we can get this drawn up. And you guys can follow along. This won't take very long. This actually... Well, I'm going to do this. It happens pretty darn quick. All right, you got your Fusion 360 open. You want to start a new. We want to start a new design. We're going to have a blank canvas here, just like you see here. First thing I'm going to do is go into sketch mode. Create a sketch right here. Click. We're going to select a plane. Boom. Now we've got our plane selected. Now what I did, folks, and if you look down here in the bottom, let me see if I can make. I can't make myself bigger, can I? Yes, I can. Look at this. Oh. Right here in the bottom part of my screen, I took I took several shotgun shells, and I took some measurements off of things. So here's a here's an example of the time type, kind of sort of kind of the top on it um, that I drew on the one we're going to do here. So this gives you an idea of the shotgun shell. So I took something actually the, the actual size, and then I take my calipers, and then I'm sitting here taking measurements on these different features. So what I'm drawing below here, I've got it. There again, I've sketched it up a little bit here to show you guys what I'm doing. This is how simple this is to create something that's three-dimensionally really cool. And it's actually pretty easy overall. So with that being said, let me shrink myself back down. Boo, honey, I shrunk my Michael uh, back down to this. And let's get started drawing. And uh, this is going to be so simple. You guys will go, wow, that's so cool. I need to get Fusion 360 and start drawing some of my own stuff. By all means, please do. So we're going to start a new sketch, which we just clicked on. I'm just going to select a line here. We're going to start drawing lines. And I'm going to pick right here on the origin. And this first line needs to be 11.18 millimeters long. Just like that. Hit enter. We're going to continue on. We're going to draw another line vertically. There's 1.29 millimeters long. Hit enter, and we're just going to keep doing this. And then we're going to come back in like this, straight across, 0.99. And then we're going to do straight up now. We're getting the bottom part of the shell almost complete. 16.71 uh, uh, is what I measured up for that. And then we're going to come back in for where the shell comes in again. And you'll see what I'm going to do here. So this is going back in 0.23. So if you guys just sketch along on a piece of paper, uh, you can do this really quick without me being in tow here if you want. And then we're going to do one more at the end of this line. This is going to come up. We're going to do a 90 degree. Whoops. There we go. Keep an eye on your right hand side there where it says whatever degrees you're at, 90 or 180 or zero or whatever. Uh, this is going to be 37 millimeters tall. We're going to hit enter there. Let's zoom in. Now I'm using my scroll on my mouse to zoom in and out here. And it's funny because it will follow where we are, where we are arrows at. That's where we're scrolled to or from. See, so I'm scrolling up here. Now we're going to do one more line across. So we're going to come this way and this is going to be two millimeters long. And then we're going to go down and we're going to go 0.96. And then we're dang near done, folks. We're going to come right back over here to the center. You know, the origin line here. And then we're going to come back down here and create another one right there. And as you can see, we've created a profile of the shell, one half of the shell. Now what I'm going to do is 
create some primer detail down here at the bottom. And this is going to be real simple to do. So I'm going to come in here from the center here. I'm going to use this little uh, fit point spline. And I'm going to click right here. And this is this is approximate, guys. This is not anything crazy. Uh, if you want to do it ac more accurately, I can tell you how what I can do here. So we can draw a line that's like from here, uh, just to give you an idea how far this is. It's 1.733. And then we got a point there that we can draw another line vertically here of uh, 0.344. So this is the kind of the shape of our primer here. Uh, what I was going to do is use this one. You can go here and approximately right here, let's say here and here. And see, now we've got ourselves a curve. Hit enter. We got ourselves a curve here. Then we can go back and trim off what we don't want. So let's get rid of that, get rid of that. See, now we've got this nice little thing. When we rotate this around, it's going to make a primer shape. And we can uh, get rid of this dimension here. We don't need it anymore. None of this constraints. Who needs these stinking constraints, right? There we go. Now we still got a, a nice clean thing going on. Next thing I want to do is another line. We're going to come over a little bit further. This is just a, um, you know, let's just try a couple millimeters over. But we're going to kind of just do a little box here. We're going to go here. We're going to go up about 0.365. And then we're going to go over from there. Uh, what do I got here? 0.412. And then we'll come back down and connect it. Oops, click the wrong thing. I always hit my escape key. If I click the wrong thing, I hit the escape key. We'll draw another line right there. And then we'll go ahead and trim things. Let's get rid of that line. We don't need it now. So now we've got the whole profile drawn. And believe it or not, this is a, a perfectly formed shotgun shell. May not look like it. I'm rolling it around for you so you can see. So now what we're going to do is we're going to revolve it. We're going to finish our sketch. Boom. We've got all this detail in here, right? We're going to do a revolve, and it's going to be that right there. It's selected one, selected this profile because it's the only profile on the screen. The axis, let's select the axis we want it to rotate around, which is that. And just that fast, you got something that's starting to look a lot like a shotgun shell. Simple, elegant, and simple. So now let's start adding in some. Uh, more features that make it look more like a shotgun shell than it currently does, right? So I want to put some radius up here at the top. Let's let's just do this top detail real quick to make it look like a shotgun shell. You know, this color, it's black. It's kind of boring on this drawing. So I say let's uh, let's uh, change the appearance. There we go. Just do a search for red paint. There we go. I like that. Let's see if that works. I want to put some fillets on here. So right here, we had that. Uh, let's do a, a one millimeter fillet here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. Out here, we need to do another fillet for this. Is one big enough for that? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now you see we created the roll cramp on top. So it looks like a roll cramp. Pretty slick. I like it. Now, I'm going to, we're going to go back into sketch mode. So click here where it says create sketch. We're going to select this surface right here because I want to draw right on that surface. And now I'm going to do some circles. And I'll show you why. We're going to do a small circle. Let's just call it a two millimeter circle right here. And then we're going to take this next circle. And we're just going to go out to the where it clicks. Right there, just clicked in at 15.920. I'm good with that. Hit enter. Enter. So now I've got this little doohickey here, right? I'm going to use this same little uh, fit point spline again. We're going to do something a little crazy here. We're going to make an interesting looking crimp. So, because it just gives it a little bit of flair. We want some flair here. We'll do another one right here. Just, this is just random. I'm just, you know, you can undo and redo this. Uh, as many times as you want. So I'm doing it like that. So now you can see what kind of shape I got there. You see this little doohickey here? I like that. So now the cool part is, if you want to trim this, you can trim this. 
modify trim. We can get rid of that circle and that circle and just leave this profile right here. I like that a lot. So now I can select this. This is what's cool. And I'm going to create a circular pattern. And it's going to say center point. And I can pick right there. And let's see here. Select the objects. I'm just going to hold the control key down and select these four items. So you can zoom up on that. Click it. There we go. Now it says I got five selected. That's okay. But as you can see, it automatically went to a three pattern. Um, and you can change it here. You can go, I want that to be four. No, I want five. No, six. Six looks pretty sweet. Once you've got that drawn in like that, hit OK. Now you've got these patterns. Now watch this. I'm going to hold the control key down, select each one of these patterns. And well, here I can hit finish sketch. But then I can extrude. I'm going to go negative. Let's see 1.5. Let's see how that looks. It's not too bad. Let's hit OK. And I did a cut on there. Now you're starting to see it take shape. See, it's starting to look like a crimp. In a fancy spirally crimp. You know, this is a high dollar shotgun shell here, folks. Then we're going to do a little, uh, we we'll click on there. Let's see if we can do a fillet on here. Uh, let's see what one millimeter looks like. Uh, it doesn't like it. I've had this happen before when it can't quite fit it all in there. It doesn't have enough room for it. Because how deep do we go? You know, so let's, let's just select some lines here because you can just select these lines. And we'll get the same, we'll get the effect I'm looking for. And I'm holding the control key down while I'm selecting the top of each one of these. Right there. Now I'm doing a fillet. Now let's type in a one and see what happens. Why wasn't it not liking it? It's not liking it. It's not liking it. 0.5. Oh, okay, there we go. Let's try 0.6. Doesn't like 0.6. Oh, it did it. It did it. Oh, look at that. Look at, would you look at that? Just look at it. That is looking amazing. It's like a jet turbine. Sweet. All right. I like that. We're going to just select that right there. And now, now I'm going to select this surface. Now we'll do a 0.6 there. What does that look like? Will it do it? Oh, sweet. Look at that. <laughs> you got to like that. That is just gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. Hey, you guys notice <laughs> I undid something by accident. I lost my radius out here. Uh, let's do another fillet here. Oops. Yeah, let's go out here. I lost it. There we go. Was a one millimeter. Okay, I don't know what I did. I must I must hit undo at some point in time. That looks pretty slick. That's gonna look cool in a three D print. It's gonna print so sweet. All right, top of the shell is done. Look out, projectile coming at you. All right, just make sure you aim this this safe direction. No, 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 not there. Okay, let's go to the bottom. So that's the detail for the top. Now let's do some detail on the bottom. Same situation. Now, right now I'm clicking here and I'm just, you know, holding this with my left mouse key and I'm rolling it around. Just, just giving everything a look, see, right? Not trying to make you guys sick or anything. Now, uh, this will take some playing around with. You might see me kind of goofing around. I did a, uh, like I did on this one last night. You know, if you look at the bottom of this guy. Uh, you know, I got the 12 gauge. I got the RMD creations. This is where you can make it custom. Uh, now, the one that's going to be on Thingiverse is going to have RM3D creations. Why? Because I flip and created it and I'm putting my crap on it, okay? That's fine. If you want it, something different, make your own. Otherwise, this is what's coming at you. And I'm showing you exactly how to do it, so there's no excuses. All right, we're back down here on the bottom, right? And we hit sketch mode. I'm going to select this bottom surface. Boom, we're back in sketching mode right here. Now, when you draw 
letters on an arc. You got to draw the arc first. And so I'm just going to come back to the center. I'm going to kind of do a little, uh, where do I want my letters to start? Maybe right here. Now, whatever circle I do, the letters are going to be on the outside of this circle. Now, you're going you're gonna to crap when you see how easy this is to create. Text. So under the create, text. Boom. Come over to here. See this little text on path? Boom. See what I'm going to select here? That path. It's that simple. It is that simple. So right here, I'm going to type in RM 3D. Whoops. 3D creations. If I could spell, it would be really handy, right? Then you just hit the space bar, and I'm going to put 12 GA, period. Now, if I want to get that more centered, I'm going to come over here and put my uh, cursor, and I can sit there and slide that around to where I want. And I'm like, that's not too bad. Now, if you want to change the size of your lettering, that's easy here. I can take it, make it 2 millimeters tall. Or I can make it 2.2 millimeters tall. Now you can see how it's starting to run into itself. I can come back over here and back that off. So there you go. It's just that simple. Let's just go with that right there. I like it. Now I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. Because we've got it drawn. Now that we've got it created this way, what I can do is I can select that. And I can extrude it. And I can go negative one millimeter. And watch the magic happen. Look at that. Look at that. One millimeter is quite deep. Um, so minus 0.5 would be fine, I think. There we go. And we got cut selected here. One side, you know. There you go. Step by step. Easy peasy. I hit OK. You're going to see all the sketch disappear, and look what you got left. Amazing detail in the bottom of your shotgun shell. Nice. We likes it. All right. Well, good enough. So far, we've got ourselves a shotgun shell completely recreated to actual size. And the reason actual size is fine is because we're going to scale it later. Not right now. Uh, we want everything to be proportionate, right? Okay, so now we're going to go back into sketch mode again. Sketch. We're going to pick a plane. Um, you can kind of roll this around and see what plane you want to pick because you want to draw on the face, basically. So it doesn't matter whether you pick this one or this one. I'm just going to pick that one. So now what we've got, what do we want to do? We want to draw a circle in there so we can put a clock face in it, right? So we're going to do a circle diameter here, and we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and click down here so I stay in the middle, and I'm going to come up about halfway. This is personal preference wherever you want this clock to be. If you want it to be about the center, you know, you can do it about the center. Because if you wanted to create a line, for instance, and say, uh, come from here, and you can kind of get an idea how tall this is. Do like that, and you say that's like 54, call it 55 millimeters tall, right? So 55 divided by 2 is 27.5. So if I wanted to come up 27, let's see, 27.5, and I want to put this dead center, I can't. Uh, it may interfere with your shell pattern here, and that's the only reason I haven't gone that short. So mine, you know, I'm going to come up. I'm going to come up about, uh, Let's just, I'm just, this is just guesswork here. Let's just do, let's just call it 34 millimeters here. And you guys can do whatever you want here, or you can use this one off Thingiverse. It doesn't matter to me, one iota. So now that I've got me a point here I can draw on, I'm going to draw that right here. And now I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out big enough that I don't go past the, you know, out past the shell. So I'm looking at this going, eh, what well, looks good? What, what number? And that's nice to keep it whole numbers. You know, this is, we can go 19 millimeter and go yeah well, let's just try let's try 19 millimeter so now what we've got is a circle drawn inside this shell right now and just for ease of doing it that's why i did it this way i'm not trying to draw it right on this face and you'll see why now i'm going to go and turn the body off the body has been turned off i'm going to finish the sketch i'm going to select that circle 
I'm going to extrude it this direction, right? And we're going to do a create body. And let's just turn that body back on and take a look at what we got. Now, right now it's saying cut over here. I want to pick join. And what I want to do, and you guys can do it however you please. I want to bring it out so it's just... And you just eyeball this. I'm going to bring it out so it's just a little bit past. See how I've got it just a little bit past that whole face there? So it looks like 10.331. That'll work. Let's try that out. We can always change it later if we don't like it. There we go. Locking it in. So now we've got a place for our clock face to sit. The next thing we need to do is drill, do a hole in it. Now, before I put the hole in it, Let's play around with some fillets. I'm going to select that line right there. See how that goes? It wraps actually all the way around this thing where, it, where that one extrusion just meets the outside of the shell. So I'm going to do a fillet there. And we can play around here. Let's do a two millimeter fillet and see what that looks like. See how it smooths things out, blends it in. Two doesn't look too bad. Now, if you do a bigger one, what you're going to see is you're going to see these get more and more elongated. So if I put a four in here, you watch what happens. See how that just went way up here, way up there, which isn't bad looking either. You know, it just, it's a nice sweeping. Uh, I actually kind of like that. I think I'm going to leave that alone. It all depends on what you want. It's personal preference. This is where I'm going to leave it for this one. And then, and then this is what, then this happened. I'm going to do another surface. Well, let's see here if I can. I'm going to hit OK. Sorry. We like what we got there. So now I'm going to select that one. I'm going to do a fillet around the top edge. Let's just do a one millimeter. Nah, too small. Three. Almost too big. Almost too big. That comes in a long ways here. And we're going to want some of this face, you know, here. So let's try 1.5. Let's see what that looks like. All right. Now keep in mind this is this is shotgun shell size. So a little tiny radius here that's 1.5 when we scale it up is going to get big. It's going to get very big. So that that doesn't that look like that's just dipped in red paint? That is so cool. All right. So now that we have that, let's draw a circle for our clock. And I'm going to select that surface there. We're going to come back. Um I'm going to turn this body off, and I'm going to turn all the sketches on. Let's see. There's some sketches that are turned off here. See, I've got my sketch right here. This one's still there. Yeah, that was the original circle. So I can see this point right here is what I'm after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that point again. We're going to draw another circle. And keep in mind, let's turn the body back on so we can see what we're doing here. Keep in mind, you want some flat you know, outside the circle in order to get your uh, clock face to sit and kind of look like it's meant to be there, right? So pick a number that's a nice even number. So this looks like we're coming out to about 14 millimeter maybe. Yeah, let's do 14. That looks kind of good, don't it? It looks like there's going to be enough surface around the outside. We could probably even go 14.5. What do you guys think? 14.5, not 0.5. Point 0.5. Yeah, I like that. I think that's going to work just beautifully. That'll give it a nice uh, whatever. Okay. So now we're going to finish that sketch and do a cut into the thing here. Let's just go. You can grab this and go in. If we just go in like 7 millimeter, you know, 6 millimeter, let's just do a minus 6. There again, I use this to kind of give me a guide, and then I just type in a nice even number. All right, so now we hit OK. And that's just about it. You've got a clock hole to hold your clock face in your shotgun shell. Now, the problem you have is that clock hole is too small. It's only 14.5 millimeter in diameter. What you're going to want to fit this to is what I'm going to have in, th in the link in the description below is it will be a 61 millimeter diameter. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick. 
is we're gonna we want to scale this up. I would like to get this up to 100 millimeters because this makes this real easy to scale from there. And I'm gonna show you why I'm going to 100 first. So we got you want to take 100 millimeters divided by 14.5, and that gives me a 6.896. So I'm gonna say a 6.90. Is what I'm going to scale this to. So right now, I want to make this thing bigger, much bigger. So we're going to uh, modify, scale, and I'm going to just click up here and drag across and highlight this whole thing. Now this takes a second because my computer isn't super fast. One of these days, my son and I are going to get together and he's going to build me a bigger, faster computer, but just not today. Boom. That's why you have to wait. So this is this is a one-to-one -one scale right now. Now I want to blow this thing up. And so that was 6.89. So I'm going to go 6.90. So this I'm going to take it up to a 6.90. And see, it just got really big. And what I'm gunning for here, now if I hit OK, we're good. I want to go here and inspect. I hit this right here. I'm looking for 100 millimeter. Close enough, 1.05 millimeter. 100.05. Now, the beauty of this is because you guys might find different clock faces or different size clock faces that you'd prefer to use over the one I've got in the link in the description below. Or if you discover yours needs to be a different size because you want to make yours fit a little tighter, a little something, who knows what. You start off like this. And I'm going to save this. So we're going to find, we're going to do a save. Uh, I got this under clocks. We're going to go... Uh, 12 gauge shotgun clock. For YouTube. How's that? So now, this, this is actually done. This is ready to export and print as is. Once we scale it, don't forget to scale it to the size you need. Now, for my particular clock, it's a 60 millimeter clock. Right? 60. So, I'm going to go ahead and select this one more time, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to scale it. Once you have it at 100, everything's easy from there. No math involved. That's a good, that's a beautiful thing, right? So I'm going to go modify scale one more time. We're going to see our little doohickey is thinking. It's going to pop up with that same scale box again, so you can put in a number. So now we got our little box up here again. You see our scale factor is 1. If I wanted it to be a 60 millimeter, I type in 0.6, I hit enter. Guess what? This thing just got smaller scale wise. Now we'll go in here and inspect this diameter. And as you can see, it's a 60 millimeter 0.03. Flipping close enough, right? Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to get ready. I'm going to take it to my slicer software. Now, I use Ultimaker Cura. You guys have other slicer software, use whatever you want. I'm going to show you the settings I'm using for this particular print uh, so you can have some success uh, as I did. Now, one thing we haven't done yet that I need to finish up, last but not least for the detail, we need to put a little radiuses on here. This bottom of the shotgun shells aren't sharp, aren't sharp, sharp, sharp corners, corners. Wow, I need a drink. Uh, my mouth's getting dry. So we're going to do a fillet. Let's select this one. And let's put a two millimeter fillet in there. Yeah. And then we're going to select this one. Whoops. Let's just hit OK on that one. So we got a two millimeter there. There. We want to do a one, maybe. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe 1.5. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to put a little uh, bottoms of the sharp shotgun shells are not sharp on the bottom either, but they don't have much of a radius there on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and select that one, put a fill in. We'll just put a one millimeter on there. All right. So now what do you guys think? Pretty detailed, pretty cool. And what really sets these off, like you saw on my 20 gauge one, is when you have the two colors come together. Then it really starts to take shape and look like what you intended it to be. All right. Now that I'm going to save that again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. Now you can, I don't have it quite tied to it. I, I used to have my uh, Cura tied to this. So if I went 
you know, 3D print. I can select that and hit OK. My cure would automatically pop up. But I no longer have that tied there, so it would automatically uh, automatically open up uh, Ultimaker Cura. But this is the fastest way to to get it exported. So if you do this, and like I said before, you're selecting Cura, hit OK. That's fine. It's there. It, where where it goes to is in your download folder. So now you can see all the different downloads that I've had recently. But yeah, here's the one we just downloaded today. So I'm going to open up my Cura. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. What's going on here? Oh. We're going to get rid of that one. So now I'm in my CR10. I'm in my PLA. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, and what I'm going to do is import. This So I'm going to file, open files. And then I'm going to just double click my shotgun shell. Boom, there it is. So that's my print print uh, capacity I have here. Let's roll this thing around a little bit. Let's take a look at it. I like to have it so the, the opening's facing me. I don't know, just kind of picky that way. I want to see it as it's printing, how things are developing along. As you can see, all your details here on the bottom. Looks pretty cool. Let's show you my settings. So I'm using a layer height of 0 0.2, just so if you guys want to mimic me exactly to get the exact same results, and if your machine is dialed in, you should get the same results. I'm using a five wall line count. People, a lot of people don't like to use that heavy wall count. I do, I don't mind it, but I'm only using a 10% infill density. So I'm not doing a lot of infill on here. Uh, as you can see here, I've got it on my Octoprime. I'm gonna bring this over to my screen here. On my Octo, uh, print. I'm using, you can see I'm doing layer control here. I'm just showing G, G code viewer and it's showing each layer as it's printing. And it'll show you what level, what layer I'm on right now. So right now I'm on layer number 151. I got to go to layer 450. Once I get to layer 450, that's where I'm going to pause. And I'm going to show you how I, just, how I figured that out. Uh, and if you don't have your setup with Octoprint tied to your computer, I'm, there's some other videos in my, in my, uh, on my channel that shows you how to hook up your uh, a Raspberry Pi up to your printer and how to hook it up to your computer. Follow that. So as you can see here, right now, this is what's still currently printing on Octoprint. So we'll set that aside. You can see it's already coming up pretty tall. I started that this morning. You know, this is approximately a two-day print. So once this is all set up the way I want, I'm using a trihexicon info pattern. I'm not using any support. Well. Actually, I want to take away, yeah, I'm not using uh, any support. I'm not using any build plate adhesion. On my, on my printer here, as you can see in this picture right here, this is a wham-bam system uh, that has been scuffed with 220 grit, wet-dry wet, sandpaper, thoroughly cleaned many times with uh, isopropyl alcohol, 91% isopropyl alcohol. And this thing will hold like a vice to the bed. And when it's cooled off, you just peel, you just take the flexible plate, uh, bend it a little bit, and the thing pops right off every time. Wham, bam, it's a really good product. Uh, so I'm going to slice. I got everything set the way I want. I'm going to slice it, right? Dun, dun, dun. And the STL file I just imported to here is going to be the exact same STL file I put on Thingiverse, in case anybody's wondering. All right. So one day, 23 hours and 19 minutes. Two days, 495. You guys can't see this because my flipping face is in the way. Uh, I'm flying across the screen. Okay, so you can see here, 495 grams of material. Uh, one day, 23 hours to print. Uh, you can save it to file from here, but I'm going to show you the preview. We're going to go into preview and take a look at things. Dun, dun, dun. So right now, this is layer one on the bottom, right? And all the way up to the top is 1,376 layers later. So what I was doing here is I'm looking for this line right here. See right there? I'm going to see where that's at. And we'll come right down here. And you can use your arrow keys. Once you get down close, I'm looking for watch that transition happen. See right there? 
Let's see the next one's coming up. So 452 right there. 452. I'm doing it 450, 451, 452. Somewhere in that range will get you a good transition. And that's where you want to change your color. And the cool part about that, and when I get there, I'll show you on the screen how I can do it in Octoprint. Well, I'll show you real quick right here. I won't do it, do it. Well, I could. It's not a big deal. So right now, I'm in the middle of printing, right? And when it comes time to change color, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit pause, and you'll watch. And I'll pause it while it's doing the inside area here. And you watch. This thing will pause here in just a second. It'll get to its pausing point. Bum, bum, bum. Right there. Just paused. And see, this came back. I can raise this Z up. I'm raising it up 10 millimeters. And right there is where I'll hot swap the filament out. And I'll put the red filament in. Once the red filament's pushed back down in, I can hit down, just like this. Once it's done going down, I'm going to hit resume. And the machine's going to take right back off and never miss a beat. That's why it's really cool. you got pause prints. And the nice thing about this pause print, um, the temperature does not change. So the temperature of the bed and the temperature of the nozzle stays right where it's at. Now, I've noticed on some of the, uh, I'm not sure if it's all of them, but I noticed on my printers, if you try doing pause print at the control, it turns the bed off. Well, that doesn't do any good because, you know, the temperature in your bed is kind of controlling your adhesion. And if you take too long, you might lose your print. You might have a fail. So that's what I'll be doing. So that's the details I wanted to give you guys on this thing. Uh, but, yeah, save this to file. After you're done slicing, you're ready to go to town. And when it's all done printing, you just shove your clock face in there. So, uh, like this one, I don't need to save to file. I've already saved it to file, and that's why it's currently printing, because I wanted to show you guys some of this stuff in action. Now, you can use, down in the bottom here, you can use some uh, support in the bottom if you want. Now, I did do support on mine in the middle. Now, this is a real cool feature that I just uh, added on to mine. See, most of your Ultimaker Cure doesn't have, just has these few options here. I realized that I just realized that I was blocking my screen here a little bit. Here's the menu that we're using. So to, let me run through that one more time. This is the menu I've been talking about. And we can go here and delete, delete, delete. All right. Now we're going to go in here and do this one more time with you guys. So I'm going to select the body. As you can see, I'm doing this custom support here. And I'm going to just roll this around so i got a nice square view of it. So I can click here and here, here and here, here and here. As you can see, we got three sweet little supports in there, right? All right, guys. That's the long and the short of putting a little bit of support there. And uh, then you're ready to print, slice and print. So now that I put that in there, I'm guessing when I slice it again, it's going to have just a little more time. It'll be right at probably 24 or 48 hours of the time. Come on. You can do it. Two days, 24 minutes, 500 grams, half a spool. Now, the cool part about this is it's a half a spool for the whole thing. So once you have your copper or whatever base color you, you want in your upper, uh, you can easily get two shotgun shells out of this thing, two clocks out of it. So for the cost of two colors, $44, two clocks, $10 each, $20, $64. For $64, you got two pretty cool gifts to give somebody. All right. Now, if you can draw this, uh, this is pretty simple, right? We got that drawn up. Uh, you should be able to draw yourself a stand because now that you drew this up, let's go back. Let's just close this out. Close this out and go back to here. When you're going to draw a stand, you can actually look at the diameter of this now that you've created. And it's like, this is 84.373 millimeters here. And this is 82.469. Now, if you wanted to build a stand that fits it, uh, it's real easy to do. And we're, we're, we're getting to some serious recording time here, folks. But uh, think about how much you're capable of doing now just by watching what I just did. As, if you're new to this, you just you know, hopefully you've picked up some new uh, tech tips and tricks to be able to draw some more cool stuff on your own. 
uh, and just take this information, build on it, and run with it. Uh, so we, we've got this drawn up. Now, if you want to draw a stand for it, what I'm going to do, we're going to start a new drawing here, a new design. Bear with me. Uh, so I'm gonna, we're going to go back to a sketch mode here. We're just going to pick a surface. Now, here's where you can just design whatever kind of stand you want, right? So, you know, that was close to 84 millimeters for the inside. Uh, that's one circle. Depending on what kind of wall thickness you want on your stand, you know, you can do 104 here. That'll give you, you know, 10 millimeter wall thickness here, right? 104 minus 84 is 20, 10 millimeters thick here. Uh, just create yourself a line across the midpoint if you want. Let's go from here out to there. This, I'm just going to rush through this. You guys would know the rest of it. The rest of it's just cake. Uh, but this will give you the idea how I built the stand that you saw in my picture. This isn't going to be on Thingiverse. Uh, if you want it on Thingiverse, leave it in the comments. I'll draw one up. I'll put it on there. Uh, I'm kind of hoping you guys do your own design for your stand. Uh, you can make it out of wood if you want, but you got a 3D printer, make it out of 3D printed materials. Uh, so we got that, right? And now we're going to go ahead and trim some of the stuff we don't need away, right? Don't need that line, don't need that line, don't need that line. You guys see where I'm going with this. You can do a, a rectangle down here. Uh, let's go right here. Let's do the same one. This is a center rectangle. Let's do it right here. And you see what I'm doing here, right? So we just make this 100 millimeters if you want. Nope. I don't want that. This one I want to be 100. This one I want to be like 10. Yeah, we can do something like that, right? So here we go again. Let's delete some of the features we don't need on this. And let's trim some of the features we don't need on this. So we're going to go trim, trim. And now you see what you got. Let's go ahead and put some fillets. Let's uh, yeah, let's just go with what it. We're just gonna go with default fillet numbers. They're gonna throw at us here just for fun. We spend enough time talking. There you go. Now we can finish this sketch. See what you got now. Now you see what you see what we got. That's pretty slick. We're gonna extrude it. Let's just make it. Uh, let's just make it like 20 millimeters wide. Hit OK. Let's rotate around and see what we got. Oops. And see, we got a stand. Now the cool part is about this is once you've got it drawn this way, and like we said, this was 84 uh, millimeter. You can go back right in here, edit sketch. This is an 84 millimeter. You can go, oh, I want, okay, one end's 84 and the other one was 86 or 87. Because then you can just save this one off and then you can change this, the other one to 84. Change this one to 87. See, I haven't changed anything else but the diameter. And then I hit finish sketch and we're right back with the right diameter that's going to fit your shotgun shell. And then if you want to, I've done this myself where, you know, you can go ahead and select uh these other features here if you want and just work your way all the way around because soft edges are kind of nice you can put a uh like a two millimeter radius on there look at that look at that and see that looks pretty elegant don't it now you set your shotgun shell right in there so you can lay your clock down. The nice thing about laying it down is you can see the both ends uh, where you created some really cool features on both ends of your shotgun shell. And you can do that radius on both sides. So if you guys like this particular stand, leave comments and I'll attach it in Thingiverse. I'm not too worried about it. I thought because not everybody has um, Fusion 360. I've taken the time to learn. I bought it. Late took time to learn to draw in it. But yeah, now we got a stand, and I'll make this stand. I'll put two of them on Thingiverse, if only if you ask for it. If you don't ask for it, I'm not going to waste my time putting it on there. But if you ask for it, please put it on Thingiverse. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll get this on there. And you can have your complete Christmas gift 
a birthday gift or a 4th of July gift or just here's here's to my best bud gift ready to print out. Because you'll probably be thinking some of some of us are, are 3D printing nerds. I, I would call myself a 3D printing nerd because I've just fallen in love with this hobby. And uh, they'll be going, oh, you just do that 3D printing crap. You know, you're printing all your little statues and your little figurines. It's like, wait a minute, buddy. I'm going to print you something really cool for your man cave. And here it is. There you go. All right. We're going to break away from this. I'll show you where this is currently at. We're on level. We'll go back over here. We're on uh, layer number 161. Got a little while to go. One thing I do like about, the, about this, you know, it says the print time. We've been printing for seven and a half hours almost here. And this is how high we've gotten. So, like I said, this is a basically a 48-hour print. Now, the, don't make this your first print, folks. This is not for your first print of anything you're doing multiple days. Make sure you, you're comfortable with your printer and what it can do uh, and confident. Like right now, I've got to, I've timed this one out, so I'll be here this afternoon. Uh, it's 11.39 in the morning right now. This late this afternoon, it'll be up to this layer I need to switch it out at. Once it's switched out, then I can leave it unattended. I don't have to worry about switching colors again. But All right. Well, that's that for the, the computer part of it. I hope you guys are having fun learning. We're going to stop recording here, and we'll show you when I'm ready to switch the colors what I'm going to do. I'll probably record that on here and walk through it via the the camera at the place where I'm working at, working on it, and I'll show you on the screen uh, how I'm doing it, just like I, I demoed before. It's going to be an all-inclusive, right? It's an all-inclusive uh video this one is to do to create this shotgun shell with that being said i'm going to stop recording and we're going to let this get to another place where i can show you some cool stuff all right guys we're right back here you can see me right here on the screen i'm gonna make this a little bigger i think make myself a little bigger here maybe okay so you guys can kind of see what's going on in the background um we're gonna have this camera shot and we're gonna see this camera shot right here Oops, let me get this up. So right here, you can see I had to start another print. I've got the other shotgun shell that we saw earlier uh, that I started in the background on the on the other CR-10. So I decided to do a second one here because I missed the opportunity for the changeover. And I want to show you here on the G-Code viewer that at level, at, at level 450, see I'm at layer number 448. At layer number 450 is when it transitions and necks down uh right here on the shotgun shell when it next down smaller right here so i wanted to capture that for you guys and i want to show you how i changed it over and just walk it through i know i did it uh a real quick one just virtually almost i didn't do the actual change this time i'm going to do the actual change so what i've got ready to go on my cr10 is obviously i'm running the copper right now and we're sitting right here looking at g-code viewer i'm waiting for this to hit 450 and at 450 i'm going to go back up here and i'm going to hit pause and I'll show you how that's going to happen. And then you're going to see me get up and go over there. Because when you do it through the Octoprint, the uh, bed temperature stays on and the nozzle temp stays on right where you want it. So you can go over there. You can pull the filament out, put your other spool of red on, stuff the filament back in there, drop it back down 10, uh, 10 millimeters and hit resume. And it'll take off and the color transition will start happening. So uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with this little, on this Raspberry Pi, this is the Pi camera that you see right here. It's nothing fancy by any means, but it does the job. And you can see over here, I've got a regular camera right here on that one. Let's keep an eye on it. When we, when we see it's hit four, right now we're in layer 449. And uh, what's cool about this G-Code viewer is you can see what it's doing. So it's doing the outside layer on 449. And when it gets done doing this oscillator, it's going to do the crisscross paths inside. And once it's done doing the crisscross paths, right now it's going all the way around, and it should be doing, uh, I forget, it's like five layers here. I've got a five-line layer count. So anyway, I'll, I'll be patient with me here, guys. I just wanted to show you firsthand how it's happened. If this is the first time you're doing something like this, otherwise skip on to the end of the video or call it done or just don't forget to give me that thumbs up. If you could, I'd much appreciate it. 
So right now it's doing the outside and now, and then it's going to jump back in and do the, the inside. And, and this is where I want to do my change because at, at level 450 is right where the change is happening. Cause you're going to see this right here. I'm going to leave my headphones on. So I'll, uh, you can kind of see me in the background talking you through it while this is recording. So right there, boom, I think this is going to go to four, 449, it's going to go, see, it's doing the inside now. Right now, right before, right when it hits 450, it's going to get done with that zigzag. And this 450 layer is the one I want to start turning red. So right about here. We'll go back to the control, and I'm going to hit pause right here. Now you see that I just hit pause. It's going to do a little more going. Well, it's crisscrossing stuff here. You see, I'm going to, now I'm going to raise Z up. And I've got it set right here to raise just 10 millimeter. Boom, we're going to raise 10 millimeter. Now I'm going to get up. You you want to make sure you shove that filament all the way down in there really good. Uh, now I'm going to hit Z back down. It's just going to go down. If you lift it down, what happens is that tip's still hot and it could melt you a spot. I've had that happen. Then you have a little lump, and then I'm going to hit resume. And you're going to see it. Sometimes they start off right away, moving fast, and sometimes it starts off slow. It's trying to make sure it's where it's at in the program. Now that I've hit resume, and you're going to see it take off here in a bit. And nothing's going wrong here. There's nothing being hurt here. This next layer will be red. And it's going to start stacking the red on top of the of the copper here. And as you can see, it's still... It'll take it a second here, or a minute. I've seen it go for a little bit. Uh, ideally, you stop inside that zigzag pattern and or in the, in the fill. And that way, some of the transitions happen in there. But right now, what it's going to be doing going around that outside edge is it's still pushing out some of the copper that was in there in the nozzle tip. And then it'll start just automatically blending into red. And it'll be just fine. Now, you're going to see it pick up here in a bit. Maybe. Come on. Come on. You can do it. All right, now look at there. It's back up to normal speed again. That's what she's going to do. And you'll get a seamless transition. Just kind of, it's hard to see in the background there. But you see that one's been running over 30 hours so far. And this one took right at. Let's see here. It was 16 hours and four minutes to get to that point right there. So if you're doing a job like this and you can, you kind of get an idea, uh, like what I did, I set a timer on my phone actually, because each one of these layers took about 1.83 minutes and I knew I was going to layer 450. So then I was like, all right, sweet. I'll just do the uh, timer and I'll set it. So I'll, you know, I can be there at least 15 to 20 minutes before my timer went off just to make sure I give myself enough cushion to make this happen. I did that yesterday and I did that again today. I just want I thought it was important to capture this for you folks. Uh, any of you that are new to the uh, printing world, 
this is a uh, this is kind of a neat little trick, and you can make some neat stuff just by transitioning, uh, changing some colors while it's on the fly there. And that is an option. You can do it, and I've done it several times successfully. Anyway, we'll see you at the end of this video. We'll show you the finished product with the clock in it, and uh, we'll see what the bottoms look like. Now, this one on the far end I did with support in there, uh, and I might have had a, the Z down a little tight against the bed. Um, I touch off basically and on this mirror. I didn't have it quite as tight Maybe I did we'll see how it looks out. We'll see what both that's a wham-bam surface This is just printing on a mirror right now and I am running a 60 degree temp on both bed temps. I'm running 210 On the PLA and it seems to flow and do everything you need it to do. So anyway, see you at the end of the video All right folks, there it is in all its finished glory You can see that detail on the top how that looks printed now we got our bottom. And this is how it looks like from the back, and this is the clock. And like I said, you can make a stand, like I showed you in the video there, that you can support it like this, so you can see the detail on both ends while you're showing off your, your prize creation. But anyway, it's pretty cool. I like it. Anyway, this will be sitting on my desk right now, so I can take a look at it every time I want and tell the time, even though I've got computer time on three of my screens. It's just a novelty, guys. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something today. Uh, hear this noisy thing next to me. You remember previous noisy? I quieted her down. This one's next. This is an Ender 3 Pro. Just tune in. My next video I think I got coming out after this one is going to be on the unboxing of the Ender 3 Pro. We're going to talk about it a little bit and see how it performs. And then video after that possibly is going to be my Ender 5 or Ender 3 Pro upgrades. I've uh, researched in depth uh, the best upgrades for this particular printer and we're going to go through that. So guys stay tuned. Lots of good content coming. Uh, I've got a new hot end coming for this one that I'll be putting on. That'll be something else I'll do another video on. Anyway, I want to educate everybody on 3D printing. I'm learning fast as the speed of light. That's pretty fast. I'm not learning that fast. But I'm enjoying myself and I'm having a good time learning this stuff. I want to bring you, like I said, I've been, ever since December of last year, I've been bringing you along on my printing, 3D printing journey. And I want to continue to learn and grow and be able to do some really cool stuff and share with you folks. So, so you guys can do some really cool stuff too. Create some projects of your own. Um, I can't help but think this would be a really cool gift for a guy that's a hunter. Uh, I'm a hunter. I think it's pretty cool. So guys, get out there and have some fun. Create, inspire, build, and share with the world. This is Michael saying have fun in 3D World, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.